Linda. Hi, Jim. We're Hardiness Approach. I have been waiting for this day for a very long time. In, in my trusty little homesteading book, I have written down that today is January 26th. January 26th is right here. This is April 20th. April 20th, where I live, is the last frost date. 12 weeks from today. It is the day to take my trusty little cells and start planting. So there are some things that you plant 12 weeks ahead of time. Mine are leeks and onions. That's what I'm doing today, leeks and onions. You can never have too many leeks or onions, ever. True. Now, what I'm gonna do with these leeks is do them the, the JM 40 year way. So I'm gonna start them in here and then put them into another container, into another container, so that they are pretty long. And then I'm gonna take my little dibble, dibble? Dibbler. Dibbler, and put it into the soil and drop them in and walk away. Wow, nice long. Nice leaks. long leeks. That's my goal. Um, as long as the ground allows me to do that. And we ever have it pulled up, it will. It will. So, I have these that I bought from Amazon. Um, and they're different than I've had before. Um, they are a little wider. Um, there's 72 cells. And we have plain ones for them to go into. Hold and the water. Hold the water. So, Jim is going to actually probably go out on the porch and dump and fill them full of soil. Would that be a good thing, huh? Yeah. Would they work okay, huh? So um, these are my seeds. I know, I don't have many compared to a lot of people, but they're all in alphabetical order. And um, why do I like onion so much? Because I use onion in almost every single recipe I use. I go through a three pound bag of onions every week and run out. Um, yeah, so I use onions in everything and I want to have a bunch of different kinds and look at this beautiful one. Look at that, how beautiful. That's from Baker Creek. It's called the Red of Florence and I love um, uh, shallots. That one looked like a shallot that I just showed you so I don't even know if I have any shallots left in here. No. Okay, got to go buy shallots. Um, we're going to do our farm, our gardening different this year than we did last year. Of course, we just threw the garden in as fast as we could. And um, we're going to do some areas that require a little bit more uh, weeding. And some areas that where the weeds get really bad, we're going to make sure they're covered with ground cover. And we are um, working really hard to produce all of the vegetables that we need throughout the whole year. Um, and, and see what we can do to be able to do that. And look at this. Jim is just magically bringing in soil for me. I was going to give a quick summary on my hand. Those of you who have been uh, reading my blog know that I hurt my hand. Um, when we were trying to, when the pigs escaped. The pigs escaped, you guys, twice. And um, they will find the weak link, and we found one where we were supposed to put the end of the hog panel onto, in front of the tree, and then put it there. Well, we put it back of the tree so they were able to push it, break it, and get out. And so when we were fixing it and putting it on the inside, uh, I was on one side of the fence, Jim was on the other. We both went up to the branch at the same time. The branch snapped, smashed this finger, and threw my hand back into the barbed wire. Um, I couldn't hardly move this finger or this finger, so they had it x-rayed to see if it was broke. No cartwheels this time, and it wasn't broke. But it's red and inflamed and infected. So unfortunately, I am now on an antibiotic, but um, I'm not going to mess around with 75-year-old Bob wire. So yeah, I'm on an antibiotic now, and um, it's pretty dang sore. Sorry about that. Pretty sore. 
But so I'm going to do these, get them wet, and plant my leeks. I fell in love with leeks um, when I was introduced to them by Kristen Kimball from The Dirty Life, the book that she wrote. She has a farm. She and her husband up in Essex, it's called Essex Farm, up in upstate New York. And I've been following them for 10 years. And in her book, she introduced me to potato leek soup, which I had never eaten before. And I have now just fallen in love with leeks. They're so mild. You can interchange them with onions. Um, but they have a, I love them. I just love them. They're so fun. And um, I can never find organic ones in the store. And so I'm really excited to have my own. I did grow them in Nevada. Was very successful in growing them in Nevada, which was really, really good. So here I go. Um, the ones that, these are called Easy So American Flag Leeks. We ordered our potatoes yesterday. Um, so they will be coming from Morgan Seeds, which are also here in Missouri. We got our, them from them last year. We grew, we got a lot of potatoes, but we grew them in the wrong place. They had too much competition. This year we're growing them into um, barrels, and I'm really excited about doing that. So. so now we're going to do succession, leak succession organic seeds from territorial seeds in Oregon. Oh, they have these wrapped individually. How nice. I wanted to give you three hints that I got in a webinar that I watched. Maybe some of you were watching Joe Gardner or Joe LeCamp. Um, he gave a free webinar for seedlings. And I want to give you three things that I learned. Number one that I learned is that some seeds need light to germinate and some need dark. I had no idea. So the onions need dark so this is going over knee over these so that they are dark lettuce and i think spinach but lettuce for sure needs light so you don't want to bury it too deep in the soil or it won't come up okay so that's number one is light number two is moisture so they they say that you take filled capacity not F-I-L-L-E-D, but filled, like a field out in the pasture. You take a sponge and you dip it in water and you pull it out and it all drips off. But when it stopped dripping, this sponge is still filled with water. It's just, it's the filled capacity of the sponge. Seeds are the same way. So you want to keep your filled capacity of your seeds 50 to 75% of the, of the seeds and in the soil, but the seeds itself is the capacity that you're trying to keep water in. Um, so you have to spray, 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 only not too much because if it's too soaked, they won't work. If they're too dry, they won't work. I haven't quite figured out how to tell what the field capacity of my soil and my seeds are yet, but I am spraying them three times a day. That's what I'm doing. Um, so I was really excited that I learned this about my onions and leeks, that they don't want light right at the time that I had planted them. The third one is warmth. And they need to be at a temperature, an, an ideal temperature to propagate. So like spinach can, can um, germinate, sorry, I meant germinate. Seeds can germinate for spinach between like 35 and 75 or 85 degrees, 75 degrees. That's a huge spread. Not all of them have that. So if you have them though at 35 degrees, they are not gonna germinate as fast as if you have them at 65 or 75 degrees. So I'm putting mats underneath these onions to try to give their little bottoms some heat 
so that they will be able to have a proper temperature to germinate. So light, temperature, and moisture. We have another pig escape. This is the third one. So we went through and reinforced everything. And when we found them, one was in with the cow, and one was trying to get back in in the worst way. It was just like, oh, and then what, the other one was in, and one was still out, and he was just having a fit. Like, let me in there, too. <laughs> so they don't really want to be free. So now, this is the gate we get them into. They have never gotten through here, but we are tying this one shut, just in case they decide that they might get out here, too. This is an old fabricated gate. The latch, the hinge uh, places on it don't fit a standard hinge. I don't know what it was for. It was just laying around. We haven't been able to do more than just lean it up against things to hold things in, but it's like unbelievably heavy. So it, it doesn't just move out of the way easy, but tying it on here yeah. lets us swing it open, but it, it's not going anywhere. But at this end, we've got this gate here that's got this chain on it so we can wrap it around here and fasten it into the normal fastening so they're not going to uh, root this open push it open they, they haven't been tempted because they push this way they'd have to get behind it and pull that way but if they ever did that by accident which pigs do so many things they have a lot of happy accidents uh, they could push this open and be out here in the yard and Looking for looking for us and food. We're we're outstanding in our field today. <laughs> I'm an outstanding person in my field. <laughs> we want to get started on the perimeter fence. We not are ready to put one up, but there's a lot we have to do to get ready so that we can. Uh, one thing is to finance all of the materials to make it happen. But there, there's a current fence in that keeps the cows in. It's compromised in a couple of places so that we can't really... Couple. Couple, several, multiple. <laughs> to where we can't really run electricity through it. So we, we're going to get started on cleaning that up so that we can uh, make full use of it in the meantime. But before we can feel safe having pigs and sheep out in this pasture to where they would go to the... Pasture pigs, not pigs. Yeah, yeah, the pasture pigs that we're going to have. We have to have a fence that is hog and sheep tight. And so what we're going to do is get the welded wire. Um, it's uh, three or four feet tall, whichever one we can find. It comes with 330 feet. It's what we had before for our pigs, and we never had one speck of problem with no. our pigs. Um, that's not completely true. They got out this, this way. They didn't get out that Yeah, they didn't get they out, didn't out get the out fence. They didn't get out that wire. And so we're going to put that up. Then we're going to put a bob wire along the top and a hot wire that comes out. Um, so it will keep all the animals that we have in. Now, it costs $1,600 to get this fence. And uh, we've got to be ingenious and figure out, we're like, do we do a Kickstarter? <laughs> What do we do? Because anyway, we're, we're working on ways to put together the finances to make that happen because that's crucial for the next things that we want to do, but we're really ready. We, we have enough pasture, we have enough grass to, to take advantage of it. We need more pounds of animals. And instead of having lots of cows, we want to split that around to have other animals. And in fact, as we've said on, on our pig barter video that we're going to be having a couple of pasture pigs so we need a place where we can be confident that they can't accidentally find their way out and into problems and when we do get sheep and we put a little thing out there that we would like to get bottle fed sheep sheep that are bum sheep whatever and everybody still wants to 
charge super high for them. Well, they're they're not they're not supplying they're supplying what they have, not what we're looking for. Yeah, so, so that we're looking that's for that. that's fine. I understand what they're doing, but we we were just looking for a situation where somebody needed to get rid of something that was yeah. a problem. So we're still looking for that. We'll bottle feed them, and then by pasturing them, then we keep the parasites going down. Yep. Because what we learned is pigs, parasites, and cow parasites do not transfer to sheep and vice versa. And But um, sheep and goats transfer and pigs and pigs transfer. So we cannot put our new pigs in this pig area. We have to have a new area for our pigs. And we're maybe even using this. And, and by pasturing them, they won't be back to the same place for long enough that any parasites that may be there will die before they get back. Right. So they really limits greatly the chance of any type of uh, infection from parasites. We're out doing the cutting that we need to do. The section we're going to show you, this is like at the corner of our property. And on the outside of the fence, which is where we're standing right now. Which is still our property. Still our property, but the, the, the bushes, the trees, you name it, the jungle hasn't been trimmed out here ever. And so it's gotten closer and closer with larger and larger branches and, and trunks to the fence to which to the point that it's right on the fence in several places and next to impossible to keep off the fence. Every couple of days, it would need to be trimmed. So we're trying to take it down within like a yard or so of the fence and anything that might try to grow over quickly. And so we're gonna show you what it looks like and what it, uh, where we need to cut and what it looks like where we have cut. Okay, so I just wanna say, honeysuckle is like Tarzan vines. <laughs> they just, well, I mean, I thought blackberries in Oregon grew everywhere. These grow everywhere. Well, they Plus wrap, they're intermingled in with wild blackberries. Yeah, and they wrap on everything yeah. and they're mingled with other branches that ha are just little uh, spiky, poke you thing. So let me let me show you where we've been. So if you look along the inside of the fence there, you see that's nice and clean. Not on that side. That side, we're going to mow that. That just needs mowed. This side and through here we've trimmed, but you see what we're coming up against over there, right up along the fence. That's what we've been dealing with. That's not the whole perimeter, but there are some sections where it's that way. And that's what we need to knock down. This pile in here is what came across here last summer when it flooded and it all piled up here. There were some small trees and they it all accumulated there. rinda has been clearing it out right along the fence line here. Uh, it's crazy how much there is, but uh, uh, we've got to get it away from the fence so that we can turn the fence on. Eventually we want to make this pile go away a bit more, but enormous, enormous job. This area over here has several stumps in it that were cut and uh, they're high enough that I can't take a mower into there, but I've identified where they are, cleared out all of the, the wood and the rocks that uh, I would run over except for the stumps so I can mow quite a bit more of it than I have so I can keep it from getting as much into the fence as it has. So we've done so far today maybe about 100 feet. We've got a long way to go and uh, I'm going to say this is probably the roughest area. We started in the hardest part. There are a couple of parts that will be hard too, but this one is rough. 